I'm David Harvey and welcome to Harvey's of Whitney. We're an old established family business going back some 70 years and in this masterclass video you'll see some of the beautiful pieces which I deal in and I will try to put them into their historical context. Make sure you subscribe to this channel to get notifications of future masterclass videos. Click the link below to subscribe to our free newsletter packed full of details of fresh acquisitions and news from the antiques trade. Continuing the theme of mahogany and Chippendale period, we have this wonderful commode. Now remember what I said about the Rococo being principally a French style, the Rocaille, which was adopted and adapted by English cabinet makers. Here you have another perfect example of exactly that. This dating from the 1760s is the English interpretation of the French Bombay commode. And as you can see, we've got this wonderful swooping serpentine shape going across the front, down the corners, along the frieze at the apron. It just has virtually no straight points to it at all. And that's typical of that period when here in Britain we were taking ideas and styles during the reign of George III and interpreting them in a very English way. So here you have it. And inside the cabinet you've got adjustable shelves, a very practical piece, a very English piece, even though it has something of the French about it. During the reign of George III, one of the great passions was doing the Grand Tour. So you'd do the Grand Tour, you'd visit ancient Greece, ancient Rome, you'd look at all the ruins, you'd make a collection of different pieces, of art, works of art, volumes, paintings, and you'd assemble these in your home. And this led to the revival of the neoclassical interest. And the neoclassical taste that we see again coming from Thomas Chippendale in the work that he did with the Adams brothers became the flavor of the 1770s. And here you have a pair of chairs that being gilt, there's something very French about them, but there's also a very English feel to it. When you look at the carving and the detail on these chairs, on the top rails, these ribbons here with the little flowers or the patere in the center. And then when we look here again, the same sort of motifs, these are all neoclassical, the hatchings, again, the patere on the corner, the fluting to the legs, a very neoclassical pair of chairs. They date from about 1770, 1775. They're English. Again, a little bit of French inspiration to them. These are salon armchairs. These would have stood in your salon. You'd have sat with your guests and friends on chairs like this. Beautiful, rare, and very fine. It is nice to see a piece of vernacular furniture, oak furniture, country furniture, where the predominant fashions in London are also represented. So we've been talking about the neoclassical and here you've got this oak dresser with this lovely neoclassical urn inlaid onto the style. And it's the same at the other end. Because this is a piece of oak furniture, the fashion for the neoclassical would have been in the 1770s. So this is probably some 20 to 30 years later than that. So dates from about 1790, 1800, sometime around then. But nice to see the interpretation on a piece of country furniture of the highly fashionable London style of the time. This wonderful bookcase dates from about 1780s, 1790. And it is George III period again, but you'll see the mahogany is now substantially cross-banded with these oval inlays, the cross-banding going everywhere on the piece. And you can see it up at the top as well, 
Well, it's got this lovely pendant cornice running through there. The shelves are all adjustable. It stands on these lovely splayed and shaped bracket feet. It's a secretaire bookcase. Now, the interesting, one of the interesting things about this is that when you open this, you can see a beautifully fitted interior there. All the drawers here, again, beautifully cross-banded. Interestingly, it's got this shaped section here, which I've not come across on any other bookcase. But on doing some research, I came across an illustration in George Hepplewhite's The Cabinet Maker and Upholsterer's Guide, which is then dated 1787, but was published posthumously by his widow, in which exactly the same layout for the interior of the secretaire is illustrated with this unusual concave bowed section to the centre, exactly as you have it here. So that's a nice touch. I do hope you have enjoyed viewing this video and there will be follow-up videos with discussions and fresh stock items as they become available. Make sure you subscribe to this channel to get news of future editions. Click the link below to subscribe to our free regular e-newsletter with further images of fresh acquisitions as well as free invitations to antiques fairs and exhibitions. Thank you.